Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the GRIPS Forum. Uh, my name is Izumi Ono. Uh, I teach international development policy here at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies, GRIPS, based in Tokyo. I will be moderating today. Today, we will travel to the space together. We will learn about Japanese ex experience of planetary exploration. I am very pleased to invite Dr. Hitoshi Kuninaka, Director General of Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, ISAS, and the Vice President of Japan Astrospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. JAXA is Japan's equivalent of American NASA. Do you know that the solar system, Taiyoke, of which our Earth is a part, has a history of 4.6 billion years. And the big universe, Uchu, to which the solar system belongs, was born almost 14 billion years ago. This is an extraordinary long time span, far beyond our imagination, even if compared with the history of humans on the Earth, which is maybe several million years ago. Conducting planetary exploration missions visiting small planets called asteroids and collecting their samples made it possible to find clues how the situation of the solar system had been at birth and gives us important scientific knowledge of the origin of life and the ecosystem to which our Earth belongs. Of course, this requires a huge effort for science and technology development and innovation. Dr. Kuninaka is the person who together with JAXA colleagues and expert was directly engaged in various planetary explanatory missions by such spacecraft as Hayabusa 1 and Hayabusa 2. Hayabusa means falcon in Japanese. I imagine that the many Japanese people remember a famous movie story, moving story about how Hayabusa 1 returned to the earth in 2010 seven years after its launch by overcoming so many difficulties and brought back samples from the surface of a one of the asteroid for the first time in the world. Dr. Kuninaka was a key member of the Hayabusa 1 project and more recently served as a project manager of Hayabusa 2, which successfully completed and returned to the Earth in December last year after six years of mission by collecting a lot of samples from another asteroid and making various technological breakthroughs. Why is Japan engaged in such planetary exploration? Why are such missions are important for Japan as a world? What will the future plan and vision for space development? Let's listen to Dr. Kudinaka's lecture with great interest. He will speak about 50 to 60 minutes and then we will have a panel discussion inviting experts and group students. And after that, we will open the screen for Q&A discussion. As usual, the presentation discussion will be on the record. So let's welcome Dr. Kuninaka for his lecture, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Hitoshi Kuninaka. Uh, I am very happy to have an opportunity to present our activity to you. And first of all, I, I should say my I, I would like to show my gratitude to the GRIPS. And then let me share my presentation material. Can you see my presentation material? Yes. Yes. Okay, let me start. So uh, the title is Planetary Exploration by ISAS JAXA Deep Space Fito. So uh, Professor Ono have already uh, introduced uh, ISAS and JAXA. ISAS is the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, JAXA, uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. So long, long time ago, uh, about 100 years ago, the uh, Aviation Institute, uh, that is the origin of ISAS, Aviation Institute was organized in the uh, University of Tokyo 100 years ago. And then, so uh, in those days, Aviation Institute uh, research and developed the airplane technology. And then, so uh, after World War II, 
R&D field and the main topics were changed to space science and technology. And then, so 2003, JAXA was organized, combining several Japanese institutes, including ISAS. So that present state, ISAS is one of division of JAXA. And then, so uh, uh, this is my uh, my self induction uh, introduction. So uh, I am Hitoshi Kuninaka, uh, Director General of ISAS and the Vice President of JAXA. And I am a researcher originally to study plasma interaction between spacecraft and space plasma. Through these activities, I developed microwave discharge ion engines, which are applied to Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 asteroid explorer as a main propulsion system. And so this page show you the an artist image of Hayabusa 2 asteroid explorer. Uh, you can see on the side panel of spacecraft, four ion engines are installed. And in this uh, image, three of them are turned on in this image. Original Hayabusa was launched in 2003 uh, and, and, and explored asteroid Itokawa. and then came back to us 2010. Based on the achievement of Hayabusa, Hayabusa 2 project was initiated in 2011. Spacecraft was launched in 2014 and landed with asteroid Ryugu in 2018 and then returned to us 2020 uh, last year. And then, so I would like to uh, remark the uh, special feature of the Hayabusa 1 and 2. Total weight, launch weight is about 500 kilogram or 600 kilogram. In the uh, uh, space technology, so Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2 are very tiny spacecraft. If we compare the NASA uh, or ESA uh, space missions. And then from now, on, I will explain sequence of, of events of Hayabusa 2 mission. And then so uh, in the Hayabusa 2 project, I was a project manager in the development phase on the ground. Uh, it's my photo in front of the accomplished spacecraft printed at the cover page of JAXA Britain. Uh, in the short development time period, less than 3.5 years, we managed to accomplish whole of spacecraft in time for launch in 2014. And then so we executed the launch campaign at the Tanegashima Space Station. This is a real movie for a launch campaign of Hayabusa 2 by H2 rocket at Tanegashima Space Center. December 3rd, 2014. All systems are ready. Main energy ignition. SLB ignition and lift off. ロケット。平成26年12月3日午後1時22分04秒に we had a liftoff of the H2A launch vehicle number 26 with the Hayabusa 2 and three secondary payloads on board from the Tanegashima Space Center at 1.22.04 p.m. on December 3, 2014, Japan Standard Time. Main energy ignition. SLB ignition and liftoff. At the uh, uh, launch campaign, uh, at this day, I stayed at the uh, control center of Tanegashima Space Center. And then uh, at the, uh, 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 I, I, I was a project manager so that yeah, seven minutes before the launch, 
lift off, I as a project manager push the flight ready switch. This was an extremely rare experience and an exciting moment in my life. And then uh, after the launch, uh, we turned on ion engine for the cruising uh, sequence from Earth to asteroid. So uh, this is the uh, uh, schematical diagram of ion engine. So in the ion engine, we make plasma. And then so uh, uh, plasma is accelerated by the uh, electrostatic force. And then so exhaust high velocity plasma jet. So uh, uh, in the uh, introduction of Hayabusa 1 and 2, the main future of these spacecraft is a very tiny spacecraft, around 500 kilograms. The reason why such tiny spacecraft uh, has a long range cruise capability is because of the ion engine as a main propulsion, which exhausts extremely high velocity plasma jet over 30 kilometer per second and reduce propellant consumption. In the technical world, we call uh, such kind of the high speed plasma exhaust jet is high specific impulse in technical term. And Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 installed only 60 kilogram xenon gas as propellant for the round trip mission between Earth and asteroid. If a conventional chemical propulsion is applied to Hayabusa 1 and 2, we need several tons of propellant. In the sense, we need very large spacecraft and a very huge uh, launching rocket system. But the, uh, if we use ion engine technology, we can realize very small spacecraft and a medium class launch rocket. In the world, there are various types of ion engine, which are a cesium ion engine, Kaufman ion engine, Linkasp ion engine, and RF ion engine, and so on. But ISAS JAXA succeeded to develop our original and unique system, that is microwave discharge ion engine, which are characterized by electrodeless plasma generation, resulting in long life, high reliability, robustness, and versatility. These uh, high technology realized to rendezvous with asteroid by even the tiny spacecraft. So this page shows you the comparison of two target asteroids, Itokawa and Ryugu. So uh, Itokawa is an oval shape, stone type, we call S-type asteroid with 500 meter uh, tip to tip length. On the other hand, Ryugu is a spinning top shape, carbon rich C type asteroid with one kilometer diameter. Hayabusa original explorer Itokawa and Hayabusa 2 did Ryugu. And so uh, after the rendezvous of the uh, asteroid Ryugu, we executed the uh, lot of the uh, proximity operation. From now on, I would like to show you some of them. Uh, that is the impact experiment. So uh, I can show you the ground full scale demonstration test. So impact is the, uh, located here, and then you can see a concrete panel is surround, uh, surrounded by concrete panel. And uh, from now on, I will ignite impact, and then copper bullet will be shooted this way, very high velocity. So, and then so soon, you hear a very large uh, explosive sound, so that please take care. I will start the movie. of the gunpowder, the copper barrel uh, was accelerated to two kilometers per second and then shoot it this way. Then you can see two screen penetration 
So using this manner, uh, we measure the velocity of the bullet to penetrating uh, at, uh, around here. And then, so this device was applied to uh, exploration to uh, asteroid Ryugu. And then we attempt the artificial crater generation experiment on April 5th, 2019. First of all, Hayabusa released the impactor from the mother ship of Hayabusa. This is the exact image at the moment of impactor separation taken by onboard infrared camera. Our present state, spacecraft hovered 500 meters above asteroid surface. After several tens of minutes later, uh, impact automatically ignited. And then so a uh, copper bullet will be uh, shoot, uh, shot, shot to the surface of the asteroid Ryugu. And then so the uh, moment of the uh, impact, uh, we success, uh, successfully observe, observe the uh, impact uh, a moment. So this is the exact uh, video movie. Uh, we successfully monitor the formation of the crater and the ejection of material from the asteroid surface. You can see the uh, 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 emission of, of the fragment from the surface of the uh, Itokawa, uh, Ito surface of the Ryugu. So this movie is uh, very important because this is the first image a uh, human being witnessed how to form a crater on the asteroid. This movie contains very important scientific data on the crater formation science. And then so uh, uh, once, uh, one month later, after the clear up of the fragment, Hayabusa 2 came back to the impact point and observed the form of the new crater, uh, which was about 70 meter diameter, three meter depth. This page show you the comparison before and after the crater formation. So you can see around here, uh, about 70 meter diameter crater is formed on the surface of the Ryugu. Uh, and that this uh, rock is the, the changing location. And so uh, this uh, rock is the, uh, uh, covered with the uh, soil of, of the uh, asteroid Ryugu. And then so next operation, so vicinity uh, of the, uh, this new crater, we try to touch down operation to the surface of the asteroid. So uh, uh, on July 11th, 2011, we executed the second touchdown operation and the material sampling near the new crater. This is a movie played at 10 times speed. Uh, spacecraft, uh, first of all, spacecraft is hovering 10 meters above and then descent and then touchdown and ascend. So many boulders are scattered surrounding. So uh, I will try it again. After the accomplishment of the all experiment around the asteroid, Hayabusa 2 left for us using ion engine in December, 2019. One year later, uh, December, 2020, Hayabusa 2 came back to us. I can present a movie on the capsule reentry at Umera, Australia. This is a night sky in very windy day at Umera, Australia. 
波及時刻です。He said time for fireball, and then you can see the、uh, point of light at the lower light. This is a reentry capsule separated from the higher b o o s t e r tube. Concentration Orion. So you can see the、uh, square、uh, concentration. And so, but there is a real difference from our Orion.、Uh, this is a view at the South Hemisphere, so, head to stand of Orion. And then after that, we fly to the、uh, landing point using the helicopter. And then, so we identify the exact location of the、uh, landed capsule. And after the daybreak, we went there to retrieve the cap capsule. And then, so uh, only uh, two days later, a h o l e of the capsule was transported to Japan,、uh, our campus, Sagamihara. And then, so、uh, Uh, the work、uh, then began to open the sample container inside the entry capsule. So, sample container is a cylindrical、uh, package about diameter、uh, is about 4.8 centimeter diameter, and then、uh, so divided into three sections. And uh, so, uh, first section, chamber A, has a lot of the black grain. So, it was the、uh, Collected sample at the first touchdown operation. The chamber C contains a, a lot of large grain、uh, at the second touchdown operation. So you can see these black、uh, grains is the uh, uh, soil collected from the、uh, asteroid Ryugu. So、uh, I have already explained to you、uh, Ryugu is a C type asteroid. C means carbon. So, carbon type asteroid. So, this grain has a lot of the carbon components. So that you can see very dark on a black、uh, soils. This is the reason why. And then now、uh, we have started the scientific, mater uh, scientific uh, uh, material investigation.、Uh, we have just started the、uh, scientist approach. And then,、uh, in parallel to do that,、uh, end of this year, Some of sample will be delivered to NASA. And so, uh, uh, ISAS JAXA and Hayabusa 2 projects are supported by international space community from US, Germany, France, and Australia. NASA supply DSN. DSN means Deep Space Network, Global. Space satellite tracking system. So, NASA supply DSN support to、uh, ISAS JAXA and the Hayabusa 2 mission. In, and then, so、uh, we will exchange uh, material, uh, asteroid material、uh, between Osiris Rex and the Hayabusa 2 in order to maximize asteroid science. So, Osiris Rex is NASA's asteroid sample return mission. So,、uh, they Explore the asteroid Bennu. And then, so now、uh, Osiris Rex is also on the way to us. It will come back to us 2023. And then, after that, we will exchange asteroid material、uh, each other. DLR, DLR is German Space Institute, and KUNES is the、uh, French Space Institute. 
we will have a good collaboration uh, with DLR and the CUNES in the Hayabusa 2 project. And as for the Australia, so uh, we have a very tight and uh, uh, collaboration with Australia. So a uh, retrieval operation at the Australia Umera, we should send just 70 personnel to Australia Umera. But so 2020, we have a COVID-19 situation. And then so after the uh, uh, severe negotiation with Australia government, finally, uh, Australia government accept uh, se Jackson 70 personnel uh, at the Australia, South Australia, Adelaide. And of course, we take care of the uh, prevention of epidemics by two weeks quarantine in the hotel at Adelaide because of the retrieval operation. Uh, at the capsule reentry on December 6, 2020, uh, Miss Jan Adams, Australia Embassy to Japan, uh, participated in a press conference at JAXA. And Miss Megan Clark, head of the Australia Space Agency, uh, visited Umera to witness the operation, a uh, capsule operation. Hayabusa 2 project contribute well to foster good relationship, good re international relationship between Australia and Japan. I believe space science and technology are very good tools for international collaboration. And from now on, uh, I would like to explain ISAS JAXA future works. This page shows you the Pepe Colombo mission. This is originally ESA, European Space Agency's missions. And then so cooperative effort uh, between ESA and the JAXA ISAS, we developed the uh, Pepe Colombo and the MIO, uh, MMO, Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter. So combi combination of the BEPI and the MIO were launched from the Akuru European Space Agency, ESA's launch pad to the uh, Mercury. So BEPI Colombo is a probe to Mercury to elucidate its magnetic field and its interaction with the harsh solar wind in the close proximity to the sun. Due to the technological difficulty, Mercury remains mysterious. Pepe Colombo is a cooperative interdisciplinary project between Japan and Europe to investigate Mercury. ESA's Pepe and the JAXA MIO were launched in 2018 and now on way to Mercury. So they will arrive that they will uh, start observation from 2025. Uh, this page is show you the active uh, spacecraft, Akatsuki, circulating around Venus. Uh, which target of uh, Venus is the planet proximity, the same size as our own Earth. But its atmosphere is about 100 times as thick as the that of our Earth. It is covered in high temperature carbon dioxide. The super rotation reaching 100 meter per second, very high speed wind at high altitude is a uh, that is a strong wind, uh, cause of which warming uh, remains unknown. Akatsuki takes advantage of the six instruments to observe atoms, uh, meteorological phenomena on Venus in detail. These findings are expected to lead to a better understanding of the meteorological phenomena not only on Venus, but also the other planets, and further help explicate why the Earth's atmosphere is the way it is, as well as how it may change in the future.
So next page, uh, this is explanation of SLIM. SLIM means smart landing, smart lander for investi in investigating moon. SLIM has a purpose of demonstrating high precision landing technology. Pinpointed, pinpointed landing to a desired location on a gravitational body is a required technology for the efficient future exploration program in which multiple landings and a sample return are foreseen. SLIM is under development and it will be launched in 2022 fiscal year. This page shows you the explanation for the MMX. MMX means the uh, Martian Moon's Exploration. Uh, MMX will visit the two Martian moons, Phobos and Deimos, and land on the surface of Phobos and collect a surface sample and return to us 2029. So spacecraft will be launched 2024 and it will arrive at the target asteroid, uh, uh, target Mars next year, 2025. And uh, it will return to us 2029. So I would like to uh, comment. So uh, 2025, uh, Japan has the uh, 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 Expo, <laughs> Expo at the Os Osaka. And then so I want to uh, show real-time mass information to the uh, exposition at the Osaka. And then so the, uh, uh, the objective of the mission is to reveal the origin of the Martian moon. The goal beyond the ob objectives is to progress our understanding of the behavior of small bodies that deliver water from outside of the solar system to the habitable zone of Earth. And this page shows you the NASA's Dragonfly mission. So it will be launched in 2022 and arrived at Titan in 2034. Titan is the, uh, one of the moon of Saturn. And uh, this is a fast trial exper uh, challenge to lot lotus craft will be fly in atmosphere of the Titan in order to looking for the periodic chemical processes common on both Titan and us. It will take advantage of Titan's dense atmosphere that is the four times denser than us to become the first vehicle ever to fly its entire science payload to new place for repeatable and targeted access to surface materials. And in this project, ISAS JAXA will deliver seismometer sensors to this project. And then so uh, uh, in the summary, so I, I would like to explain you something. So this page, this is a chart of the, our solar system. Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Moon, Mars, Asteroid, Comet, Jupiter, and Saturn. On this solar system, ISAS JAXA delivered a lot of space asset over 20 on each planet under the collaboration with NASA and ISA. And in this page, yellow means the uh, already terminated project. Green means still active one. Red uh, is reds are under development and blue uh, future plans. But the, uh, uh, soon uh, ISAS JAXA uh, will make uh, uh, our exploration fleet. And then using uh, this program, uh, uh, this chart shows you the ISAS JAXA Deep Space Fito. It will elucidate the 4.6 billion years 
history of solar system, and then origin of life by swarming manner. So using this deep space frito, main target is water. So we want to know, uh, elucidate a mechanism, mechanism of water trans transfer in the solar system. You know, our Earth contains a lot of water. However, on the basis of science, space science, it is not true. So this chart shows you the, uh, if we hold of the uh, water on us is a very tiny one. So uh, only 0.1% of our us. Us uh, water is very tiny one. On the other hand, uh, Europa, that is a, uh, one of the moon of uh, Jupiter, Titan is the moon of uh, Saturn. So they have a the lot of water, several tens percent of their uh, main structure, main body. And then so Earth's water is very limited. So in this page is show you outer planets such as Jupiter and Saturn has a lot of water. And so this is a reason based on the science, science, space science. Beginning of us, it was a very hot, rocky planet. So that evaporated material such as water and atmosphere went away to space. After cooling down, water and atmosphere were brought to us from outer planet by somebody. And we think there are asteroids and comets, so-called small body in the solar system. So uh, by delivering water as well as organic compounds, these small bodies, such as asteroids and comets, may play a very important role to make the habitability of our planet. So these organic material, such as uh, amino acid, may be origin of life on us. Revealing this hypothesis is the ISAS small body exploration strategy. This chart shows you another uh, point of view. Hayabusa brought back sample in 2010, and Hayabusa too did 2020. And then MMX will come back to us 2029. So we are thinking few, few further sample return mission in future. These periodical sample return is our promise to the science community in the world. And then so uh, most achievement in Hayabusa, that is the sample return mission. So previous space science, so main Sequence, main strategy is only the remote sensing. But Hayabusa established the uh, material investigation after the uh, sample return mission. That is an innovative mission, I believe. And then so that scheme will uh, extend to future based on the Hayabusa, Hayabusa 2, and the MMX and future. This is the, uh, uh, our strategy to promote ISAS JAXA. Uh, into the world. And I can show you the another approach, origin of life. So previous hypothesis, amino acid uh, was transferred to us from solar system. But the most advantage idea is the panshermia hypothesis. In this hypothesis, so life itself tripped in space. And then so or from planet to planet. So in order to verify this uh, hypothesis, panshermia, so scientists executed the very interesting experiment. 
So they executed the uh, uh, bacteria named Deinococcus was exposed into vacuum space in three years on ISS, International Space Station. After the three years exposure, they retrieved the sample and scientists confirmed survival of bacteria inside of the sample. And of course, the surface bacteria are uh, cured due to the uh, ultraviolet irradiation. But underneath of the surface, so uh, uh, Deinococcus are still alive. So this experimental results support the interplanetary transfer of life itself instead of amino acid. So based on this hypothesis, the following, the, for, that is a, just an example, but the uh, following sequence is supposed, uh, uh, supposed. The first of all, life such as a single celled organism or a bacteria was occur on the surface of the Mars. And the next step, there was a large meteorite impact to the Mars. And then a lot of Martian soil and the rock were scattered into space. These material circulated around the sun as the asteroids. And then, so these asteroids, some of the, these asteroids reached to us and uh, entered to us uh, as a meteorite. O on its meteorite, so Martian uh, bacteria might be there. That is the origin of life on Earth. This is a uh, hypothesis called panshermia. So uh, that is a very interesting experiment, but, but just hypothesis present state. And then so uh, I want to add another information. This experiment named Tampopo. Tampopo means dandelion in Japanese. So you may know, you know, seeds of dandelion fly in there to expand their active area. This is an analogy on the same manner to the panshermia hypothesis. That is a very good uh, naming, I, I think. And then so in the parallel to the planetary exploration, we are now developing the uh, observation network for space astronomy, integrating the various wavelengths X-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, uh, visible light, and uh, radio wave, and the microwave, and so on. It will reveal 4.8 billion years of solar uh, space history. And then, so, uh, I have a question to you. So this is, is a question to you. Uh, why does Japan develop and uh, investigate the space? So uh, in order to answer this question, I should explain the uh, space uh, theory of the space technology. So you may know us, our us is rotating uh, one circulation per day, 24 hours. So that velocity is relatively very high. So Earth's rotational speed at the equator is about 460 meters per second. That is 1,700 kilometers per hour. That is a very extremely speed. That is twice of jet airplane. And then, so when we launch the rocket, we will uh, space engineer utilize this speed as rotational speed. And the rocket utilizes as rotational speed for efficient launch, so that rocket is launched toward east way. And then, so let's consider the launching rocket from the Europe to east way. So once we have a launch failure traveled rocket will drop to the, uh, some neighboring country and cause a 
international affairs. That is a serious situation. And then Europe has a launch center at the French Guiana, uh, uh, South America continent, uh, north side of Brazil. So its location facing to the high sea at the uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean. And then, so that is, a, uh, that is a very good location to launch rocket to the east way. But uh, French Guiana is a far, uh, far from the Europe. So uh, due to the long distance of the Europe, it needs long logistics and uh, expensive ma maintenance fee and so on. In the same manner, Japan located west rim of Pacific Ocean so that we have an inherent advantage to promote space development. So uh, east side of Japan faces the high sea in the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, and Tanegashima Space Center at the Kagoshima Prefecture is the easiest accessible. So if you have a chance, I would like to recommend you visiting there. Another future, uh, when we operate a spacecraft in deep space, the orbit determination is indispensable procedure to know precise location of spacecraft in the solar system. A conventional technique, range and range rate method, needs three days observation, which consume a lot of time, cost, labor, effort, and, uh, and so on. Recently, innovative method, Delta Doa technique was developed. In this scheme, only 30 minutes observation using simultaneous three worldwide tracking station uh, realized a precise orbit determination on the basis of radio interferometer technique. For example, or in this chart, so combination of Japan station and the US gold station makes a long baseline east-west baseline. And the combination of Usuda uh, Japanese tracking station and the Canberra a station makes a north-south baseline. And then simultaneous three station observation uh, realize Delta Doa technique. So uh, in this manner, you can see Japan station play the very important pivot. Uh, this advantage can contribute the international collaboration in space activity. And I have already reported you will develop international collaboration among Japan, US, France, Germany, and Australia at Hayabusa 2 project. Uh, I would like to stress you the importance of Japanese geopolitical location at North Hemisphere, uh, Far East, Pacific Ocean, West Rim, not only space development, but also other foreign affairs. Uh, that's all my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Kurinaka, for really a clear and detailed explanation 